Hey there, how are you doing? So in this NCS Workbench session, we'll work with line elements or 1D elements. So in this slide, I am showing an example of a simple truss model. So you have few truss elements or 1D elements, which is supported 8.A, a fixed support. It means it cannot move in any direction. 8.C, there is a roller support. It means that its vertical motion is restricted, but it is free to move in the horizontal direction. And the loads are applied at point D and E. As you can see, it is a very simple truss and we can get the force and reaction from simple hand calculation. So the result is shown on the right side picture and the reaction at point A is 3 kN, the reaction at point C is 8 kN. The load on member AC, the axial load on member AC is 0. The maximum tensile load on mem is coming on member DE which is 5.4 kN and maximum compression is coming on line BC which is minus 5.4 kN. So we'll try to model the same thing in ANSYS and we'll see whether we get the same result or not. So what do you expect from this session? So in this session, we'll learn how to apply material property. Sometimes you have to work with the different units like British units or English, uh, I mean to say SI unit or metric units. So we we'll learn how to assign units to the project and change the display to show those units. And we'll work with space claim to create the line bodies or geometry. Again, we'll change the units as needed. And since we are working with line bodies, we'll learn how to create a cross section and assign rectangular cross section or I beam cross section to those line bodies. Once geometry creation is done, we'll go to the NCS modeling and learn the meshing, applying the force and deflection and solving it to get the reaction forces and deformation. So with that, let's get started. I have already opened my workbench session here. So let's pull the static structural from the analysis system and drag it here. So you can see engineering data is already tick marked uh, because it by default takes the stainless steel as standard material. But say if you want to assign a new material, you can right click and edit it. So let's say uh, you want to use a different material, we'll call it, uh, let's say some wood, uh, which is uh, Douglas fir. It is a name of wood, just write the name and enter. Then you can go to the left side and click on isotropic elasticity, just double click. And you'll get a window like this where you can assign the Young modulus and Poisson's ratio. So for this wood, you can search the property in internet and Young modulus is around 13.1 gigapascal. So I'll just write that and Poisson ratio is 0.29. So in, in this, uh, only this tropo property is needed at this moment but in case uh, you want to vary your property with temperature you can just double click and on the right side you can assign temperature so it will create a tab table and for different temperature there can be different young modulus okay uh, so for us it is not needed we'll just close this now engineering data 
okay once now engineering data is done so before I go to geometry uh, let's talk about uh, units so in this menu you'll see units here so you can choose to work with SI units or metric units or whatever you want from these options so let's say I prefer to work with SI units so I'll go here and select SI and you have two options how you want to display your unit display values as defined or displays values in the project units so say I have selected SI units so if this is marked I'll whatever value I put I'll see them in the SI units so I prefer to do that okay so this is how you change the unit system in the ANSYS okay now let's come to the geometry section so now by default ANSYS is set up to work with uh, surface or uh, body elements or you can say solid elements so before we start working on line elements we need to do some modification so let's right click on geometry and go to the properties so you can see on the properties basic geometry options you have solid bodies surface bodies and line bodies so we'll select on the line bodies so that we can work with the line elements so let's close it again right click select on new space claim geometry let's wait for space claim so space claim is open here now by default this grid system will be very small so we'll change that let's go to file click on space claim options it will open a new window where we'll click on units and change the length from millimeter to meters come down and here we have to change the grid size and minor grid spacing is currently by default at uh, 1 mm which is too small and we have to work with meter so let's make it uh, in meter okay yeah so now select the plane view by default it will be XZ plane you can rotate the plane by selecting uh, desired axis so if you select X your plane will be oriented in YZ plane if you select Z your plane will be oriented in XY plane if you click at the center of Z it will further rotate the plane and which looks proper now so let's say I want to sketch in this plane so I'll just select sketch here now XY plane is here go to this menu bar and select line here so that we can draw lines so before you start drawing you should be able to uh, zoom in in zoom out just to make sure that uh, you are seeing proper portion of the screen so for zoom in in zoom out the you need to use the scroll wheel okay uh, just use the wheel uh, turn just turn it and see whether it zooms it and zooms out or not so let's say we create a line here uh, I have selected the line I... okay it is working but looks like I have zoomed a lot hmm. so let's zoom little bit more so press escape if you don't want to sketch or 
deactivate the line command okay now select the line here select at any point one grid size is one meter so i want a line of three meter so the third grid will be three meter okay so we have two lines of three meter three meter height is two meter so let's first create it another line at three meter i'll press escape and then again i'll come to the origin we'll use the scroll wheel to zoom in zoom out to adjust the screen and select the origin point and the height is two meter yes three meter three meter again press escape start from this point uh, let's just join this and how does it look okay we have vertical line here and another diagonal line here so after adding this line our geometry line geometry is complete well done so i'll press escape and it is de deactivated let's go to the structure so if you see this uh, these are the line elements we have created now we'll select on prepare on this main menu and we'll get all these options so we'll go to the profile and select the rectangular profile okay so once you click that if you go on the structure tab here and minimize this you'll find a beam profile a new section created here so let's uh, double click on rectangle or i think we need to right click and edit beam profile yeah so once you click it by default it is taking 0 0.01 meter or by 0 0.01 meter you can modify this on this side ruler dimension is given here so just click it and after clicking on this you'll get the edit window you can say i want to have this as 0 0.06 meter so i'll change it so you can see it is no more rectangle uh, i think we let's change the other dimension also and make it 0 0.6 so it will from rectangular it will become the square again you can use the scroll wheel or middle button to zoom in zoom out to fit this in the screen so now you can see this is a square cross section with the dimension 0 0.06 meter on each side so this is done and we can close it from here let's close this and we are in the main window again let's go to the structure click on curves and expand it click all the lines again go to prepare and now instead of selecting this rectangle we'll select the create so by doing this we are assigning the beam cross section to these lines so just click it yes and if you see the earlier it was written curves now it converted to beams and each line is assigned a rectangular cross section so this is how you assign the cross section to the line elements now let's again select all these lines and right click and create 
a component so move we are moving all these beam elements to a new component so let's say name is component one okay so component one is created so why we are doing that so once you select this component one you'll get a option for shared topology so here the options are group share and merge so we'll select the merge so that it will merge the key points or nodes at each intersection and they are no more a single body because they are merged or kind of welded they will act as a single body they the complete component will act as a single body and that is the purpose of merging so to do it again just telling you uh, you need to select the component and go to properties here and in the shared topology section you need to select the merge option okay so once this is done uh, our work in the space claim is done and we can close the space claim okay so ansys mechanical is open now it took some time but it has loaded all the geometry and uh, materials property everything and you can see that uh, uh, there is a electric mark here uh, which means that uh, to generate the mesh we need to just uh, right click and update it or click on generate mesh but before doing that uh, let's make a few check so in this we have two materials douglas fir and structural steel if you go inside geometry section and select the beam element you can see that the assigned material is structural steel and not the douglas fir so we'll just uh, click and select the douglas fir here okay and the material is changed another thing to, to notice here is that the model type is beam okay it is a beam element and we have various other options one of the option is link and truss so we'll come back to that but first let's go ahead with the beam elements okay So we change the material property we know the we are using the beam elements here let's go to the mesh and in the mesh setting if you come to the sizing uh, so just before the sizing the default element size is zero so like it let's use some larger element size so so that our each member gets only one element so I'll use element size as 10 and generate the mesh okay our mesh is generated here now to change the view we can go to the display and select your preferable view so views and front view to align in xy plane or you can just use your middle button press it and move your my mouse to rotate the model but let's go to the front view okay so here is the front view you can change the display again uh, instead of using body color you can change part color you can switch on the cross section okay and select uh, yeah just play with all these values mm -hmm. yeah okay so you can see that uh, we have rectangular cross section here Oh, it is hmm. so we have the rectangular cross-section now let's assign 
boundary conditions to this part so go just right click on the static structural go to insert and select on fix support so let's say we want to fix at this particular node so you select that particular node and apply so that particular node is fixed in all degree of freedom now we want to use a roller support at this node so I'll go to insert and I'll select the displacement okay select that particular node and then apply so currently if you see it is showing free 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 so what we want here is we want that this particular node should be capable to move in x direction which is the horizontal direction but it should be restrained in the y and z direction so let keeps keep x free and make y component and z component zero on this particular section now if you see it is free in x direction and fixed in y and z direction so this joint will now act as a roller support okay now let's uh, apply the loads so it is same right click and insert now go to the force so here at this particular node applied load is how much it is uh, it is 3 kN and at point D it is 2 kN so I selected this point currently it is showing a uh, defined by vector and magnitude is 0 Newton so I'll change this to components and in y direction in negative y direction I'll apply 3 kN load and again we'll go to force and on this location I'll apply change this to component and in y direction apply 2 kN load ok load and boundary condition is done now what result you want to see so we'll go to solution right click and insert let's say I want to see total deformation and insert beam tools so it comes by default for beam elements so let's select beam tool and what are the options you'll get inside the beam tool direct stress minimum combined stress and maximum combined stress okay say you want to get the reaction forces at the fixity so let's insert a probe so go to the probe and select the force reaction and in this detail window you'll see that fixed support and displacement so let's say we want to get reaction at the fixed support so it is applied again right click insert probe force reaction so instead of selecting fixed support now we'll select displacement and it will give the reaction at the node where we applied the displacement which is this particular node okay uh, what else we want to get let's see what are the other information yeah in the beam results we can also select axial force so let's select that okay so all the desired result 
we added in the solution portion we applied all the required boundary conditions like fixed support displacement force okay now we can simply right click on the solution and solve it okay so solution takes some time but now it is done and we can see the results so let's go to the solution section and see axial force on each part so here what we see is that max axial force is on this diagonal portion and the minimum is on the other diagonal member here so max is around 5400 newton and the minimum is uh, minus 5389 newton so you can see that the the values are different for both of these members they are almost same equal and opposite but there is some difference and let's see how is there in our solution so you can see that this portion has a load of 5.41 kN and this one is exactly opposite minus 5.41 kN so our answer is closely matching with this but they are not exactly same okay uh, and what could be the reason so as you know that in the beginning we choose to analyze this model using beam elements and beam elements are different than truss the beam element can take the transverse load but truss or link element they cannot the joints in the truss are free to rotate but in beam elements they are fixed with each other they cannot rotate freely and that is the reason we are seeing difference in result so they are close uh, but not uh, very close there is some difference okay now if you want to check some other results like total deformation uh, this is how it looks if you want to animate you can click on this play button and it will show after applying the load how parts deform okay let's pause it uh, we have already seen the axial force we can check what is the reaction force at the fixity location so you can see it is uh, minus 3000 newton close to this number and reaction at this particular location is around 8000 newton close to this number okay um, now let's see uh, let's change the element type in the same model here and see if our results changes or not so I'll go to go inside the geometry and select this beam element and instead of selecting model type as beam I'll change this to link or truss so just clicked it and once you change this you can see that your mesh is different uh, it has to be updated and all the solutions we generated earlier uh, they are showing that uh, it requires update so let's update them one by one first generate the mesh yeah, it's complete make sure that each elements has only one single element okay now let's solve it okay so when you solve it you get a warning that line body uh, where is it so let's click on this message hmm. so we got some error elements and some warning elements uh, warning messages 
so warning is line body with its type set to link truss or cable has multiple edges please ensure that enough constraints are applied to prevent rigid body motion okay why it is saying is that because we have only fixity complete fixity at this location and on the joints uh, it is free to rotate and also it has three degree of freedom ux ui and uz so if you don't fix on this direction this part can move in uh, z direction so it needs proper fixity but still uh, because we are not applying any load on the z direction it's fine uh, it converged but you can see some red marks here and why it is coming is that because we inserted here beam tool and now these elements are no more beam and hence it is not able to get the result for those beam results so let's uh, delete the beam portion of it uh, let me delete everything except this reaction force and add some other so let's say i want to get forces on these link elements each component of the element so i'll say user defined results and i'll enter in the expression i'll say s miscellaneous one s m i s c one and enter so for the link element this is the way to calculate the axial force on each element so this is how it will calculate and let's right click and say evaluate all result okay now you can see that all that red update mark was is gone and now we have the green tick mark it means that we are getting the result so if you see user defined result so this is nothing but the axial forces on each element and now if you see the result is closely matching with our hand calculation the max and min value are minus 5.41 and plus 5.41 you can see very close to this number and let's see the reaction force on this point exactly 3000 Newton you can check in this region force reaction matching with this number and force reaction to the reaction at this location is 8000 Newton very close match so this is how beam element and link element works and now our course is over please do give me your feedback and thank you for watching